Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Tony. I've just been to the local Asda shop, which is uh, which is near near our house, and it's one of the small Asdas. Uh, and you can buy loose garlic; they're selling loose garlic. I've just bought five of these at a cost of thirty nine pence each. Thirty nine pence. No, thirty five pence each. They were. And I bought five of them. So that comes to £1.75. And as you can see from that, the Whoppers. Let's go and take a look at what we've got. So yeah, it's 5.45 and I've just finished work. So we're going to see what we can get done. Because we've only really got about an hour now. At this time of year. In these northern climes. Of daylight. Left to work in. So, but I've got some. I've got some ideas. I've got some plans and ideas for what uh, what we're going to be doing. We're definitely going to be getting shop bought garlic into the ground as part of our experiment. Just a quick catch up, actually, on the onions that we put in a couple of weeks ago into the cell trays. The idea at this time of year is to get the um, get the roots off and running, and maybe get the starts of the shoots coming. And as you can see on these. That's the case, isn't it? They're popping through the shoots and the onion the, the onion root situation is fine and dandy. They can be potted on now into the plant pots that we're going to be uh, growing them over winter in. And maybe a few in the ground, we're going to be experimenting with them. Anyway, okay, so we were talking about garlic um, for today's episode. And if you can take a quick look at those Casablanca there, white Casablanca, £1.99 they were, and you got three... Um, you got three bulbs for one pound ninety nine. Okay, and the standard size, really, for the cloves that you're getting out of it, is probably about that, about that size of the, from the white Casablanca. These are obviously seed garlics. Now, that's your size of a clove. I've not, I've not got the actual bulb to show you. But they're about half the size of that, the bulbs, the white Casablanca bulbs. And by comparison, your average clove is that, and that's the average clove. Now, lengthwise, it's probably about a third, a third longer. But if you look at the actual, the actual girths and widths of these, they're about twice as wide, twice as big. In effect, on average, these shop bought ones, not certain of the variety for those, but the two lots that I got, I got I'll show you actually in here. Um, these are the ones that I've just bought from the shop, from the Asda, as loose garlics. And then that's what we've got. And there's a mixture. I think those are like a a pink germador type and these ones are obviously a white garlic and the only worry is is this browning whether they've been sort of heat treated in some way for uh, you know to make them last longer or whatever and maybe they won't even they won't even sprout but we have sprouted them before not this particular batch that we've got here but we're going to give them a whirl we're going to see if they do we got loads off them. We got about. Um, in fact, I'll count them. I'll I'll skin that. Get the cloves out. Count them. Count them all together. Bearing in mind that these were five. These were five um, bulbs. For one pound seventy-five from the shop. Okay, and we'll see. So there's the paper off. I'm going to split them all apart now and see what we've got. Now I'm going to say there's eight decent sized garlic cloves there of the sort of pink germidori variety and there's your average from the Casablanca which are the seed ones <clears throat> I've got my fingers crossed let's see how they go these the only thing that's concerning me a little bit is this browning whether that is just with the way that the, way that the garlic is or whether 
it's had some sort of treatment to preserve it and stop it sprouting. It, that'll be remaining to be seen, won't it? We can just give them a whirl, but there's eight decent um, cloves been taken out of that one bulb and the good size um, cloves. There were nine or nine stroke ten, but I tried to split these in half and they were still fused together, this particular one. And there's a little one there. But um, I'll count up how many in total we've got from the five, the five bulbs. Right, so there's 48 there uh, from five cloves. So that's between nine and ten um, per bulb, isn't it, on average? So that's about the same rate that we were getting from the seed ones. So the amount of cloves are, are similar, but uh, but in size. They do tend to be bigger, at least half as big again as the Casablanca. And if that runs true for the actual plantings and the harvest at the end of it, if they do come to fruition, then we should be getting bulbs of a similar size to the one we've just pulled the uh, we've just pulled the cloves off, which will mean that they're going to be half as big again as those. See, looking at these ones, these, these are the seed Casablanca, and they've got the browning there, in the same way as they've got the, they've got the browning, on, browning on the shop-bought ones. So, let's give it up. The only, the only way we're going to find this out is by planting them, isn't it? So, if you've been keeping up with the episodes, the other day, we cleared out the... Uh, the bed that used to have the uh, cucumbers in, in the timber frame, four millimeter clear twin wall polycarbonate greenhouse up at the top. <laughs> um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an experiment side by side. I've got the Casablanca there that were the seed bulbs. They're going to be going in on this side, on the left side. And then on the right side, we're going to be putting the shop-bought white ones in. I'm not going to be using these pinks. I'm going to be using the whites. As I say, unknown variety, just shop-bought ones, these. And it's just purely for scientific experimental purposes we're doing this. So they're going to be going in on that side, the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we're going to be putting in the Casablanca official seed ones. I'm going to be putting 20 in of each. I've got my labels there. Somebody in uh, on the, one of the last garlic videos suggested if you're going to be doing, it, doing them indoors to just use your blood, fish and bone um, as a soil amendment, as a sort of soil in, in, in ground fertiliser feed. So we're going to be putting equal amounts of the blood, fish and bone, which is going to be two cupfuls and I'll show you the cup in a second, sprinkled on the top and then massaged in as I usually do into the ground down to a, down to a few inches below the surface so as it's mixed into the surface about four inches before we plant the garlics in. So there's a beaker full of the BFB. Um, we're going to be putting two beakers full per side so altogether there's going to be four beakers full but I'm going to carefully make sure that we get a fairly even distribution through the mix of this. I want to make it as sort of uh, honest and experimental as we can really this because I'm going to be I'm intrigued, I'm interested to see how uh, how they get on the seed versus the, the sort of official seed versus the shop bought stuff and how it gets on that. If it does come to fruition, the shop bought stuff, the non-seed stuff, then if it, gets a, if it gets a good crop, I might be saving the cloves off that for next time and then it'll be artificial organic stuff rather than just some shop bought paraphernalia, you know. Alright, I'm going to mix all that in do both sides obviously, get it all mixed in down to about six inches 
and there's going to be plenty of feed there for uh, for these garlics over the next five six months I think that would have been well overkill if I'd have put two full beakers of that in <coughs> because that's half as big again as my normal beaker that I use I couldn't find my normal beaker uh, so yeah there's one and a half beaker one and a half beakers full per side um, I, c I could have easily got away with probably one beaker per side there I think I've gone overkill but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that down deep into the soil probably down to about 10 inches and give it a good thorough working over and integrate it in there and then um, leave it at that um, these garlics are not going to use all that up in the next in the next five months it's probably going to be okay for putting just putting even less in of the feed the ground um, fertilizer for when I put the, the cucumbers in next time you know what I mean I've, I've got overkill there oh god okay so that's all we mixed up and mixed in while it's still all roughed up like that I'm going to water it in I'm going to use four um, seven litre cans uh, two litre, uh, two cans per side and water all that in get the moisture back into the ground and then going forward from that I'm probably going to be watering that with uh, seven litres a side once a week but I'll be using my moisture meter to check I just want to keep it relatively damp but not wet because I want to avoid any rotting off or anything like that so uh, yeah so that's the next step get the water in there all right so it's been damp dampened off and it's time to get the garlics in there as I say I want to do 20 per side on these so I may well do two rows of 10 in fact that's what I will do I'll do two rows of 10 coming in about six inches from uh, from either either end of the widths and um, and we'll do that that being the middle point right so because I couldn't totally figure out the spacings properly there's nine per row so that's 18 garlic per side 18 of the seed garlic 18 of the shop bought in fact that's the shop that's the seed garlic and that's the that's the shop bought so we'll have to remember 18 and not 20 put the labels in so we know what's what Eighteen, remember not twenty. Um, now I'm going to water those in now on the surface. So I'm going to give them another ten liters washing on the surface, either side, and leave them then and see what we get in about a week's time. Okay. So we'll see what we get popping up in uh, in a few days' time, in about ten days' time. Hopefully they'll be sticking the snouts up those. You never know. So they've been in for 14 days now. And that's um, the Tiki Hut bed. There's the Tiki Hut. There's the bed in front of it. Space fillers. Again, the Casablanca garlic. And uh, practically all of those have come up. They're practically all up. I think there might be one there that's missing. A little bit behind but uh, yeah every other one's up as you can see we have garlic action move a bit of detritus out the way all along the board the onions in the beds are not showing yet but as you've just seen inside the tunnel the roots and the snouts have started popping through from those ones. They were the first ones to get put in. Again, that was about 15 days ago that we started off the onions in the sets, in the trays. In the cells, I should say. Okay, so those ones that are in the beds, come the really cold weather and we get the, the harder frosts and whatnot, I'll probably need to be looking at uh, fleecing those and putting maybe straw over the top of them or something like that just to keep them a little bit a little bit um, a little bit warmer and out of those cold winds those icy winds 
But apart from that, leave them to it. Come back in six months, see what you've got. They'll probably be ready for harvesting them in back end of May. So that's about seven, eight months off, isn't it now? So we're into October, November, December. And then we've another, yeah, we'll say eight months before they're ready for pulling. Eight to nine months, really. But uh, they'll be ready when they're ready, won't they, boys and girls? Let's just hope white rot and rust and things like that stay, stay clear of us. Which is always the risk, isn't it? But that's why we do what we do. Keep growing with your heads down. I've just looked at them again. These beans behind me. I picked every viable bean you could possibly get your hands on on Saturday off that. And I can see there's another about 100 that are about five, six inches long. It's a first world problem, isn't it? Hey, got loads of food there. The gift that just keeps giving those. Uh. Right, anyway, I'll see you all later on. If I don't catch you through the week, I'll catch you through the window. This is Gordon McFinder signing out. And remember, keep growing with your heads down and we love you all. All right, take care, boys and girls. Have a good week.